and welcome to our next section. Actually, before we get to either of these objectives, we have some background information we need to look at. We are in section 5.2a in our textbooks, and we're going to begin discovery of our unit circle, but I'm going to build some stuff up for you first. Let's um, take the unit circle. Let's imagine that this is just a picture of the unit circle. Here's our center, and I'm, I've got an angle, and I'm going to call it theta, an angle, like a little piece of pie in this unit circle. Um, no pun intended with that one. <laughs> Pie. Um, so let's say that we've got a point on the rim of our unit circle, and I'm going to label that as just point P. Um, before today, we've usually just used the ordered pair X, Y. If we're talking the unit circle, though, I want you to understand that our points, the X coordinate is actually the cosine of theta, and the Y coordinate is the sine of theta. Again, just for the unit circle, this is true. And it's good that they're in alphabetical order. An ordered pair X and then Y, those letters are in alphabetical order. C and S are in alphabetical order. So it's easy to kind of memorize that the cosine is the X coordinate and the sine is the Y coordinate. Okay, so let's talk about this, uh, this triangle here. Let's bring it out here. Um, here's our theta still. And let's label our sides. Let's make this uh, leg right down here. We'll label that as an X, since that's going in the X direction. And this longer leg we'll label as a Y, since that's going in the Y direction. And we'll just label the radius as R right now, even though I know uh, in the unit circle the radius is going to be 1. But for right now, let's just label it as an R. In geometry, you learned three ratios for, a tri for the distances in a right triangle, the sine, the cosine, sine and the tangent, depending on where you're standing. And right now I'm standing on this angle right here. You might have learned the, the trick so ka toa, and that's what I'm going to be writing down a bunch of times uh, to remember these. The sine, that's the so, the sine will be the opposite leg divided by the hypotenuse. So in this case, the sine is going to be the opposite leg y divided by the hypotenuse r. The cosine, the ka, cosine is the adjacent leg divided by the hypotenuse. So the cosine of this angle would be the adjacent leg x divided by our hypotenuse r. And the toa, the tangent, will be the opposite leg divided by the adjacent leg. So in this case, that would be the y divided by the x. The first thing I'd like for you to get to know about tangent, though, is that the tangent will always be the sine divided by the cosine. We'll get to that a little bit later, but that means that it's the y divided by the x. So I said that the unit circle has a radius of 1, so when I divide by 1, that doesn't change. That's why the y coordinate will always be the sine, and when we divide by 1 here, the x coordinate will always be the cosine. So that's pretty helpful. The tangent will always be the sine divided by the cosine. That will always be the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate. So those are the three trig ratios that you learned in geometry. These three ratios have reciprocals. Some of you may have learned these in um, the uh, advanced functions class before you got to this class, that's fine. But if you have not, let me show you what these trig ratios are. The sine has a reciprocal. I did my little reciprocal symbol. The sine's reciprocal is called the cosecant of theta. The three letter symbol for that is CSC for a cosecant. Cosecant. CSC is the cosecant. That is exactly the reciprocal of my sine. And the reciprocal of the sine, in this case, would be r divided by y. So the reciprocal is just flip the fraction. The reciprocal of the cosine is secant. And the three-letter three, um, abbreviation for secant is that, secant. And that is the reciprocal of cosine. So in this case, that's going to be r divided by x. And finally, the reciprocal of tangent is going to be cotangent. And the three-letter symbol for that is cotangent, C-O-T. And the cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent, which would mean that it's the cosine over the sine, 
which in this case would mean that it's x divided by y. So I'm going to need you to find all six of these trig functions. So we might need some practice with the reciprocals. It's pretty simple. Find the sine, cosine, and tangent, and then just flip them over, and you have the cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Now let's talk about the distances that we're going to see in our unit circle. There are two special right triangles that you learned in geometry, the 30 degree, 60 degree, 90 degree right triangle, and the 45 degree, 45 degree, 90 degree right triangle. These are our two special right triangles, and these will give us all of the special distances of our unit circle. So imagine again that this is the, the center of a circle and that this is the radius of the circle um, to, to get to a point on the circle. So we're going to label this as R, but since we're talking about unit circle, I'm going to make that radius 1. The unit circle has a radius of 1. Same thing here. Imagine that this is a, a point, in th that this is the center of the circle, and this is a point on the circle. The radius is 1. Let's start with let's start with this one. This was seems to be an easier um, pattern, I guess, for some people to remember. We know in a 45, 45, 90 triangle that this is isosceles. So whatever this leg is, that's the same thing as this leg. And we learned that the pattern in this triangle is when we have one of the distances of the legs, we multiply by the square root of two to get to the hypotenuse. It's the square root of two, I remember, because there are two same angles, two same sides. That's how I remember square root of two. But that's if we have the leg. We multiply by the square root of two. If we need to find the leg and we have the hypotenuse, then we would go backwards and we would divide by the square root of two. So that must mean that this leg is going to be one divided by the square root of two. We have to quick rationalize this, of course, and I'll show my work this one time. If I multiply by square root of 2 over the square root of 2, then that becomes the square root of 2 up in the numerator, and square root of 2 times square root of 2 becomes 2. So this is the simplified version of this blue um, expression. So square root of 2 over 2 is how long this leg is, and that must mean that the other leg is square root of 2 over 2. So those are the distances in a 45, 45, 90 triangle where the radius is 1, or the hypotenuse is 1. Square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, and 1. You could check that with the Pythagorean theorem if you really want. Over here in the 30, 60, 90 triangle, obviously we have three different angles, therefore three different sides, and guess what? That's why we use the square root of 3. At least that's how I remember it. Now, this is the little leg. The little leg will always be exactly half of our hypotenuse, or our um, radius in this case. And let me just show you that real fast. I'm going to erase what I'm about to show you. But if you completed this and made two of these triangles, you, you realize that we would have a 60, 60, 60, an equilateral triangle. And if this distance is 1, then this distance would be 1, and this distance would be 1. That's one reason why this has to be 1 half, because it will always be 1 half of the hypotenuse. Let me erase what I've just done. But that's one reason why that is 1 half. Once you have the little leg, you know that 2 times that will be the hypotenuse. And now we know that the square root of 3 times that would be over here. And the square root of 3 times 1 half is simply the square root of 3 halves. And those are the three special distances in our unit, excuse me, in this 30, 60, 90 triangle. 1 half multiply that by 2, and we've got the hypotenuse, multiply by the square root of 3, and we've got the longer leg. These are where all of the numbers from the unit circle, at least the distances from the un in the unit circle, will be. The smallest distance that you see up here, actually the smallest distance, you don't really see it, but there is a distance of 0. The next smallest distance is 1 half. And it's not a uh, coincidence that it's exact opposite the 30 degree angle. The smallest angle we see is 30 degrees. The smallest side we see is 1 half. The middle distance is uh, opposite the middle angle. I see a 45 degree angle. Actually, I see two of them. And opposite both of them is my middle distance of square root of 2 over 2. 
My longer distance is opposite my next biggest angle, which is 60 degrees, and opposite that is square root of 3 over 2. And finally, the biggest distance you see up here is that radius of 1. And surprise, surprise, that's exactly opposite my biggest angle that I see. So these are really the five distances you'll see in the unit circle in order. And if you think about it, this is the square root of 0 over 2, the square root of 1 over 2, the square root of 2 over 2, the square root of 3 over 2, and the square root of 4 over 2. But that's it. These are the five distances. Yes, we'll see their opposites in the unit circle, but these are the only distances we'll use. And I like to remember that that is the one in the middle. Okay, that's going to be the intro tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching that.